Father, into thy hand we commit ourselves because in that hand is where we find our grace, our joy, our peace, and our understanding. This has been a long uphill journey, and yet we're not tired, but grant us the strength to keep fighting, the peace to keep going, the insight and the foresight for clarity. Well, God, we know you're in the room. Have your way in this place right now. We just got finished calling your name, and every time the righteous one call your name, you show up. And when you show up, lives are changed, bodies are healed, minds are regulated. Well, God, once again, it is preaching time. Grant me the power that makes preaching easy. Grant me the power that makes preaching practical, purposeful, and powerful. Speak to me and through me. Clear my mind. So when I open my mouth and I hear your words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the blessed people of God shouted, Amen. If you believe God is getting ready to transform your life into a better season, I dare you to open up your mouth and give him some praise right where you are. I said, give him some praise. You just got finished calling on his name. Whatever you brought in here with you just fell off of you. The rough season of your life is over. Greater is yet ahead of you. Amen. I am just excited to be home. And um, to be in front of my church family um, for the last, I want to say, 13 years we've been here. And I'm just grateful for the opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk where great teaching and preaching happens weekly. Can we give God praise for our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Keith D. Tillett? And um, to his lovely wife, Lady Carrie Tiller, who walks beside him. He texted me last night and said, preach good. I said, send me a sermon. Uh, and I got no reply. So uh, I don't know what's about to happen. <laughs> Take your Bibles and journal with me to Genesis. Genesis, the 26th chapter of Genesis. Genesis. Now, um, if it takes you a minute to find Genesis... Sunday school starts at 9.45. Genesis. My mother is here. Can we give God praise for my mother being in the house? And um, I got a message as we was walking out that, Brother Yay, and it's your birthday. Yeah. One of the hardest trustees we have here at the church. Happy birthday, sir. Amen. Genesis 22. Genesis 22. Usually I wouldn't read this um, long of passage of scripture, but for the context of what the assignment is this morning, I'm going to read um, starting at verse 1. Genesis 22, reading from the NIV version, my Bible reads this wise. Sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out to the place God had told him about. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son Isaac. And he himself carried the fire and the knife. And the two of them went together. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went together. When they reached the place God had told him about, Abraham built the altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. 
But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Do not lay a hand on your son, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me your son, your only son. Abraham looked up there in the thicket. He saw a ram caught by his horns. He went over and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the place the Lord will provide. And to this day it is said, on the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. I, I want to talk to you as the Spirit of the Lord shall guide with this thought in the back of our mind, the process for providing. The process, the process for providing. My brothers and sisters, if you're anything like me, uh, you like to know the layout or the plan for any trip that you're on. I like to know when we're leaving, what route we're taking, how long it's going to take us to get there, where we staying at when we get there. And I love to know who all is going on this trip. I, I, I'm, really, I'm really not good with last, last minute changes. And what I come to discover is that sometimes while we are on this journey called followers of Christ, all of the details would not come at the right time. The reason is because some things are not meant to be revealed all at once. It's because we must learn as we grow. Do me a favor, do me a favor, sit back and think and think about how far you've come and how much you've grown while on this journey. What, 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 if, what if you didn't move when God spoke to you? What if you would have stayed where you were if the signs of leaving were not revealed? Let me tell you this. God will never have a place, a plan, or a purpose without having it fit for a person. Uh, the journey, the journey that you have taken over your life and over this course of time have shown you exactly who you are and have taught you so much about yourself. Sister Gentry, it is a sad person that does not allow themselves to realize how much of a progress they have survived while in the process. That, that's why you must sit down and realize how far you come while also noticing how far you do have to go. You, you, you did not realize who you were until you had something happen to shape and mold you into the person you are. You had to deal with some stuff. You had to go through some things in order to shape you into who you are today. Look at somebody and say, I wasn't born like this. You must have, you must have the ability to realize that at some point I had to go through some rough times in my previous season in order for me to handle what I got going on right now. I, I had to deal with some pain. I had to deal with some struggles. I had to deal with some obscurities, but it helped build me into I, who I am today. Every, every believer, every believer must go through a process. Every person must go through a, a process. What I come to discover is we want the shine of the overcome, but not the shifting of the process. We want the benefit, but we're not putting in the work that it takes to get it. And, and here it is, brothers and sisters, it is alarming to me how we can look for the benefit of something, but not allow God to place us into something to show us that yes, it's rough, and yes, it's hard, and yes, it is a testing, but yes, I am God, and beside me, there is no other. Matter of fact, come on, go down memory lane, let's have testimony service first, giving honor to God for whom is the head of my life, pastor, saints, and friends, you just don't know what I had to go for 
through. You just don't know what I had to deal with. You just don't know how many sleepless nights I had, how many times I had to cry myself to sleep. You just don't know what I went through all week long just to get here. You only see me on Sunday morning. Don't let my outfit fool you. Don't let how good I look now fool you. I had to cry myself to sleep. I had to struggle. Matter of fact, it was a struggle getting here right now. It was a struggle to lift up my hand. But when I got into worship, I realized I survived all week long. I survived some pain. I survived what other people couldn't survive. That's why I lift my voice and praise God the way that I do. I'm just in my introduction. Be seated, please. What 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 is your perspective like? Um, um, a lot of times, a lot of times, because of how we view something, we miss the reason behind why God is doing something. God always has something in store for your life, even if you can't see it. Isn't it, isn't it good to know that God has something in store for you? In other words, that means that your current situation has a time limit. And I know, I know you, I know you thought it was permanent. I know you thought you thought you was going to be stuck here. I know you thought you wasn't going to survive, but tell somebody it has a time limit. A lot of times, a lot of times our experience does not match our expectation. When you have an expectation of a life, but reality isn't what you envision, that's where your faith must come alive. You know, we can we can holler, hoop, and shout, and jump, and dance, and celebrate on Sunday morning because of what we heard or something that we felt. But when we hit the parking lot, here comes reality. I understand somebody has, has been hit on every side. I understand somebody has been going through pain day after day, night after night, and you had questions of uncertainty certainty on exactly why you had to deal with it. Can I give you your answer real fast? The reason why you had to deal with it is because on the other side of your storm, here comes your reward. On the other side of this test, here comes your payoff. On the other side of this pain, here comes your blessing. It's a test, my brothers and sisters. Watch this. Whenever God is testing you, it's not to prove anything to him. It's actually to affirm something in you. Yeah, because he already knows. He know exactly what was coming your way. He know exactly what you was going to deal with. He just trying to pull something out of you that he placed inside of you. Come here, Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I know you got some heartache and some pain, but still trust him. I know you got some questions about tomorrow, but still test him. Te trust him. I know you want to give up, but still trust him. I know you want to say enough is enough, but still trust him. Let me, let me give you three, three quick principles I want you to have. All right. The first one, the first one is you have to have a willingness to be faithful. Have to have a willingness to be faithful. Tell somebody to be faithful. We, we, know the, we know the story of Abraham and Sarah. In the last chapter, the previous chapter, their son is born as a promise by God. In this chapter, the next chapter, the one that we just got finished reading, it is a chapter of a test of obedience. Um, someone in this room knows exactly how that feels, where your obedience was tested. Where you was trying to question exactly, why did you give me the promise if it potentially had a time limit? Matter of fact, you have to understand, Abraham waited longer than what he had with Isaac. He waited till he was up there in age, and now God is trying to get him to sacrifice the promise. Um, you know what that feels like, God, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been serving, I've been sowing, and now you are attacking it? Now you want me to give up and throw it away? Now you want me to sacrifice it? You have to understand something. It is not easy to offer up a sacrifice. Matter of fact, if it does not hurt you, it's really not a sacrifice. That's why people are so quick to give up and people are so quick to walk away and people are so quick to throw in the, throw in, uh, the towel because it is not a sacrifice. Yeah, that's why it hurt to leave certain people. Yeah, that's why it hurt to walk away from certain things. And what I come to discover is um, God will never have you do something without having a reason to do so. 
God always knows what he's doing, even if you can't identify it. And in other words, your faith must speak to you even while you have your doubt. Your faith must speak to you even when you can't trace God because you still got to trust God. Yeah, yeah. Paul, Paul, Paul Tiller, Paul Tiller put it like this. Doubt isn't the opposite of faith. It is an element of faith. What do you mean? What do you mean? Because in order for you to trust while having doubt, you still got to have faith. Faith is not, watch this, faith is not I see it and then move. Faith is I don't see it, but I'm still going. And that's what somebody had. That's your testimony right there. Because even when you didn't understand where to go, God still get, had a plan for your life. Even when everything was hard for you, God still had a plan. Even while you wanted to throw in the towel, God still had a plan. And the only reason you are in this room right now is because you're still on the plan of God. That's why you didn't give up. That's why you didn't walk away. That's why you didn't throw in the towel. That's why you didn't quit. Because God got a plan. The text says, the text says, God says to him, God says, take your son, your only son, whom you love, and sacrifice him. Now, now let's pause, because this isn't the only time we've heard this, right? Yeah, there was another son that we heard about being sacrificed on a mountain. Abraham had Isaac, but we had Jesus. And I came to tell somebody, isn't it amazing how powerful a sacrifice is? I just believe that there, that there are people in this room just like me that are products of a sacrifice. You thought it was going to kill you when they left you. You thought it was going to kill you when you, when you passed on the opportunity. You thought it was going to kill you when you said no. You thought it was going to kill you when you gave up, but it wasn't until you realized that by letting something and someone go, that God has something better in store for you. I know you wanted the house, but you got a better house. I know you wanted the job, but you got a better job. I know you wanted the boo, but you got a better boo. Matter of fact, you got a better life because you said no to some things that look good to you. Now wait. Wait. Because Look what God, look how God works. God says, go to a mountain I will show. Go means to move. It means leaving the place of current. It means leaving the place that you know. He said, go. I will means yet to be revealed, yet to happen. Are you able to go to a place that you haven't seen yet? Are, are, you, are you faithful enough to move without all the details? Reverend Dawson, he said, go to a place I will show you. He never showed him how to get there. He just gave him a word. And that's for somebody in this room. Because people have been questioning why you making the moves you got. You can't see it, but I heard it. You don't understand, but I heard it. I might not see the house, but I heard it. I might not see the breakthrough, but I heard it. And that's why I'm still walking. That's why I'm still moving. Because I know what I heard. I may not see it, but I hear Hear it. And what did he say? He said, I will. In other words, he said, I will bring you out. In other words, he said, I will bring you over. I will bring you through. And I came to prophesy to somebody like that you still in the I will phase of your life. I know you got some pain, but he will. I know you got some heartache, but he will. I know you want to give up, but he will. I know you've been crying late in the midnight hour. He will. And what will he do? Bring his word to pass. For God's not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. I know you look at somebody and say, he will. I don't know what you've been praying about, but he will. I don't know what you've been questioning, but he will. I don't know what you've been going through, but he will. He will bring you over. He will bring you out. He will bring you through. I know the place you see right now ain't what he promised, but he will. I know the house you got right now ain't what he promised, but he will. I know where you are right now ain't what he promised, but God will. Okay, uh, let me give you the second one. Second one, we're going to move quick. Let me give you the second one. You have to have a willingness to be resilient. You have to have a willingness to be resilient. Abraham's response was staggering, but gave instant unquestioning obedience. He even got an early start. However, 
The three-day journey was probably silent and difficult. Uh, uh, I just believe, I just believe somebody walked in here with a silent and difficult season. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's silent. Your, your finances, silent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your household is silent. Yeah, yeah. You feel that your, that your future is silent for three days. He had in the back of his mind what he was tasked to do. He had the responsibility of giving up his son and had to walk with the thought in the back of his mind. Can, can, can you imagine what might have played through his mind? Saying, God, there got to be another way. Don't, don't, don't sit there and act bougie on Sunday morning, act like you ain't never been there before. Where you say, God, is there another way? God, do I really got to do this? God, do I really got to leave this place of comfort? The place that I know you called me to be. Have you ever been there before? Where you had to walk in the back of your mind? Do I really got to walk away from this job? Do, do I really got to walk away from this place that I prayed for? That I suffered for? That I went through pain for? Do I really? This is a promise you gave me. Something I wanted. Matter of fact, something you promised and spoke over my life. If I would have knew it came with all this, I would have said, keep it. You can have it. I ain't asked to preach. I ain't asked to sing. I ain't asked to be a leader. If I knew all the stuff it came with. And yet, <laughs> in spite of it, he was still obedient. Yeah, uh, too many times, too many times, there must be a willingness to still move even while the weight you're carrying is heavy. Because even though it's heavy while moving with God, it's still manageable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that matter of fact, don't hop off this journey you want because it's still manageable. Don't give up because it's still manageable. Don't quit because it's still manageable. All God wants you to do is to hold it together. And while you're holding it together, I'm going to strengthen you. Because after you suffered a little while. Here, 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 here's what I come to understand. There are sets of people in this room. Ones who are willing to be mobilized and ones who are unwilling to go. Ask yourself, which one are you? Hey, Abraham was obedient to still move while not only knowing exactly where to go, but also having to carry out a task of sacrificing his son. While having a tough assignment, it is amazing to me how God will work in a strange way where your obedience has a benefit while also being on a difficult journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's diff a difficult task and difficult journeys are meant to happen to show you who truly is in control. And that's why I keep moving because God's in control. And this is for somebody in this room that is scared to take the journey to the new place, that is scared to take the journey to the next level, that is scared to take the journey to see what's on the other side of the door, that is scared to keep moving, scared to keep going. Here is your one word for this season move. Yeah, 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 move. You've been in this place too long. You've been down too long. If God called you to it, he's going to see you to it. And I came to prophesy to somebody, I really don't care how people feel about you. I really don't care what they say about you. You are moving for God. I don't care what they try to throw your way. I don't care what obstacle people put in front of you. If God called you to it, he's going to see you through it. Greg, I feel like church and early. I need to find somebody real fast and say, neighbor, God going to see me through it. He going to see me through this rough season. He he gonna see me through this rough patch. He gonna see me through this uncertainty. I got cancer in my body. He gonna see me through it. I got doubt on my mind. He gonna see me through it. They said I only got six months. He still gonna see me through it. Wait a minute. Hold on. Watch this. Watch this. Here's how you know you gotta listen to God's voice. Look what Abraham says in verse five. He says, "Stay here with the donkey." While I and the boy go over there. Wait, hold on, hold on. He ain't finished yet. We will worship, and then we're going to come back. 
<laughs> it catches my eye. It catches my eye because we know what's supposed to happen. We know one is supposed to go up and one comes back. We know one is supposed to go in and one comes out. And even while knowing this, he still speaks to his situation. And I came to tell somebody, you know how that feels. You were supposed to be broke, but you spoke wealth. You were supposed to lose your mind on this journey, but you spoke happiness. You were supposed to lose your mind after divorce, but you spoke peace. And all I'm really trying to get you to understand is that when you open up your mouth, things can start to turn around because my question is how do you say that we're going to come back after God said kill your son because he already know I don't know what's going to happen when I get up there but I'm going to speak life over it can you help me preach to somebody real fast speak to your neighbor real fast I know you're in a rough place but I speak life I know you got some pain but I speak life I know you want to give up but I speak strength I know you want to walk away but I speak over your situation is there anybody in this room that can open up your mouth and speak over what you got going on. I speak over your health. I speak over your body. I speak over your mind. I know you want to throw in the towel, but speak. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I'm almost done. Hold on. Not only, not only did he speak over it, but watch what happened. The text says Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering. And placed it on his son, Isaac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He himself carried the fire and the knife while they on the journey, right? <laughs> They take the wood, the knife, the fire, 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 the wood, the knife, the fire into worship. <laughs> it's about to get crazy for a second. They're carrying the wood for the sacrifice to lay on, they're carrying the knife. To slay the sacrifice. They're carrying the fire to burn the sacrifice. And guess what they're doing? They're carrying all three into worship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're carrying all three things that can kill them into worship. And you know how that feels. Because all this week you've been carrying some stuff and you brought it into worship. You've been carrying your depression. You've been carrying your suicidal thoughts. You've been carrying your low self-esteem. You've been carrying your heartache. You've been carrying the craziness in your mind. And guess where you brought it? Right into worship. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name. Because I brought it into worship. In other words, I'm bringing into worship what could have killed me which means I'm carrying it it's not carrying me which means I'm still alive I should have been dead but I'm carrying it it should have took me out but I'm carrying it it should have destroyed me but I'm carrying it I dare you look at somebody and say carry it carry it not only can you carry it but your children are going to be able to carry it too I know it's rough but they still carrying it I know you want to cry late in the midnight hour but you're still carrying it I know you want to give up but you're still just tell somebody, carry it, carry it, carry it. You on top of it, which means it's not on top of you. I know it could have killed you, but it didn't. I know it could have destroyed you, but it didn't. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And I dare somebody in this room right now, whatever you got going on, I dare you to praise God. Because it's getting ready to ship. Okay. All right. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your problem is your problem just got shifted. Your, your situation just got better. Your pain and your suffering just ended because you just worshiped him with what you've been carrying. All right, sit down. Let me give you this third one. Sit down. Let me give you this third one. Let me give you this third thing. Sit down. You have to have a willingness to be fully committed. To be fully committed. You have to understand lifted. Lifted means to go from one level to the next level. And believe it or not, everyone isn't willing to go higher or go for greater. Um, some are not willing to go further because of how hard getting to this point was. But yeah, yeah, yeah. there's those of us that realize I went through too much getting here to quit here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I lost too much. I, I had to I had to struggle too much. I had to put up with too much. I had to had to survive the lies, had to survive the rumors, had to survive the uncertainty. And you think I'm going to get to this point and quit? You think I'm going to get to this point and not see the benefit of what I've been through after all the pain I had to deal with? You think I'm going to settle for this? Now, God said, don't settle for where you are. I got greater. I didn't put you in what you survived to leave you here. As a matter of fact, I didn't put you in what you were in and leave you there. I put you in it to let you know you still got another side of this. I don't know who this is for, but on the other side of this hell in your life, God got a benefit for Winslow, don't get to the last lap of the marathon and quit. Yeah, we, we, we've put in too much work for it not to pay off. Holler, there's a payoff. I said, holler, there's a payoff. Now listen, if growing up was easy, you'll see more people at the top when you get there. And because and, and you're on the move, some people will start to realize that this isn't the path to stay on. Some, some, people, some people have come to the realization that everybody that started with you isn't meant to stay on the path with you. And, and, and don't you be one of the ones that's trying to pull people or everyone into a place that God did not intend for them to go. Just because they started doesn't mean they are so sp supposed to stay apart. Just because people come to the entrance doesn't mean they get to go in. Yeah, there, there, there was a story. There was a story of um. They was at a. It was a. They was at a, a hotel, and it was a restaurant on the top level, and um. Somebody had a key trying to get there, and um. They 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 realized my key does not give me the access to the place that I thought I was supposed to be. But what they had to do was call somebody that was supposed to be there and say, Hey, can I get up there? Nah. Go, go, go to the hotel office and ask, what level do you get with this key? Because the level you get and the level that I get ain't the same level. And I refuse to try and pull people into a place that was never meant to be because you are not getting ready to mess up my mountainside. Yeah, 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 yeah. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham could have taken or taken the servants to the top with him. But look what he said to them. Y'all stay where y'all are. And the reason why is because it's not because they're not worthy of going up. God did not tell him to take them. Who are you taking with you that ain't supposed to go? God is a God of order and detail. He said, you take Isaac to the mountain. The servants started, they didn't finish. You take Isaac to the mountain. The servants started, but they didn't finish. Can I prophesy, you getting ready to finish with the right people in your life. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Don't, don't, don't try and fit people into a place that they're they not built for. Because what they end up happening is they'll start to destroy your journey. And then you're trying to figure out why you got so much hell and high water. It's because you're trying to put people in places that they don't belong. Okay, okay. But, but, but if you're going to be fully committed, look, look, look at Isaac, though. Look at Isaac. Verse 7. The fire and the wood are here, Isaac said. But where is the lamb for, for, the, for the burnt offering? Notice now. Notice he never questioned the trip. He had a question while on the trip. He was still willing to go on the trip. And then he, he's just like some of us. He's just like some of us. You know, we're asking, we're saying, I see the blueprint, but I don't see the money. Yeah, yeah. I see the plans. I don't see the execution. I see the place. I don't see the people. But look what Abraham says. Look what Abraham says, Drew. Abraham said, God himself will provide. 
Yeah. He said, he said, God himself, he will, God will provide. I don't know how, but I know he will. I don't know when, but I know he will. See, here's your problem. You trying to find all the answers when God said, just go. You trying to find all the details when God said, just go. And God said, well, if you go, I will. If you do, I will make sure when you get there, everything's in order. I dare you to holler at your neighbor and say, God going to do it. I, 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 I know you got some questions, but God going to do it. I know you got some uncertainties, but God going to do it. But hold on. He gets to the mountain. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready to get out of here. He gets to the mountain. He prepares the altar. He lays the wood down. He bounds his son, lays him down, takes out his hand. Take the knife, about to kill his son, but just in the nick of time. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, just, 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 mm, just in the nick of time. Yeah, yeah. Won't, won't, won't God flip your problem? J j just in the nick of time. Won't, won't God fix your de fix your issue? J just in the nick of time. Won't God make a way out of no way? Just in the nick of time. I dare you to put your hand on your chest and say, God gonna do it just in the nick of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was about to kill his son, but God sent word to him just in the nick of time. Because the angel of the Lord appeared and spoke a word. Can I, can I just do you a favor real fast? Can I speak a word to you real quick? That just in the nick of time, whatever you got going on, God's going to see to it. Just in the nick of time, whatever you've been crying about, God's going to make a way out of nowhere. Let me hear B flat on Yakin Road. Just in the nick of time, God's going to bring you out of your struggle. Just in the nick of time, God's going to step in right where you are. Just, just look at somebody around you and say, God's going to do exactly what he said. And the Bible says that Abraham looked up and there in the thicket. Hold on, pause right there because that has questions for me because a thicket is a tree. A thicket does not grow on a mountain. A thicket is not made to be on mountainsides. Matter of fact, it's next to impossible for a thicket to be up there because of the condition of the mountain. So you mean to tell me God got the capability of turning the impossible possible? You mean to tell me God got the power, yes sir, to take what's on the bottom and bring it to the top. Come on, great. Let's get out of here. God got the power to take what's down and bring it up. And I need to prophesy to somebody. Your money been down, but God's getting ready to flip it. They said you wouldn't survive your situation, but God's getting ready to flip it. They said your problem was unsurvivable, but God's getting ready to flip it. He looked up to the gentry and saw a tree on a mountainside. There's conditions is not feasible for a tree to grow up there. And I came to tell somebody, uh, the next time you get on your mountain, uh, look for a tree. Because uh, just inside the tree uh, has what you've been looking for. Uh, just inside the tree uh, has the answer to your problem. Uh, because there was a ram. Uh, and what I come to discover is, uh, rams have the capability uh, of climbing the mountains. Uh, they are big size of a lamb. Uh, and their horns allow them uh, to travel in rocky slopes. And I came to tell somebody, God's getting ready to take what seems impossible and hold exactly what you need right in the right time. And if you don't mind the day, look at your neighbor real fast and say, neighbor, and say, neighbor, and say, neighbor, you are on the verge of a next breakthrough. You on the verge of a turnaround in your life. You're on the verge of a blessing for your life. Just go through the process. Turn the mic up on the stage. Just go through the process of what you've been facing. What is the process we've been might endure for the night? But joy comes in the morning. What is your process? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. What is your process? You shall mount up on wings just like an the eagle. You shall run and not get weary. What is your process? Your process is the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. You got a process 
in your life. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared for the glory that shall be revealed. Find you somebody and say, I'm surviving. I'm surviving my process because on the other side is still the promise. On the other side is still a benefit. Abraham realizes obedience is better than sacrifice. And just in the nick of time, God provided. Just in the nick of time, God gave it to you. Goodbye, church. May the Lord bless you real good. But is there anybody here that can help me close the sermon and say the Lord provided? That's how I live where I live. Because the Lord provided. That's how I'm still standing. Because the Lord provided. And I need somebody that's not ashamed to have a testimony. And after everything I went through, I'm still standing. Because the Lord provided for me. After everything I cried about, I'm still standing. Because the Lord provided for me. It was difficult, but I made it out. It was difficult, but I made it over. And the only reason is because God provided. Abraham and Isaac, they had a ram. Abraham and Isaac had a sacrifice that did not live again. But you and I are so much better. Because one Friday, they hung him on a cross. Hung him high. Stretched him wide, dropped him low. He died, freeing you and me. He died, till the sun refused to shine. He died, till the earth reeled and rock. Like a drunken man, he died, until the veil was torn, freeing the altar for you and me. They took him off the cross, laid him down in a borrowed tomb. But early, Oh, Lord. Really? I'm back this for real. Sunday morning, he got up with all power, and he keeps on providing. Look at somebody and say, he provided. He provided. That's why I'm not afraid, because he provided. That's why I'm not worried, because he provided. And to this day, that place is called the Lord provided. When you get back to your house, touch everything in there. Say, he provided. When you get in your car, Touch everything in there. He provided. Matter of fact, touch yourself. Say, he provided. They said I couldn't make it, but he provided. Said I want to overcome, but he provided. Said I wouldn't survive, but he provided. You got cancer, but he provided. Your heart messed up, but he provided. Low self-esteem, but he provided. The children going crazy, but he provided. Got a crazy boss, but he provided unemployment, but he provided low money, but he provided. Is, is there anybody under the sound of my voice that can testify? Thank God for providing. Thank God for healing me. Thank God for bringing me out. I'm gonna let y'all go. But just before I leave, I dare somebody to rejoice. You might not have what you've been waiting on. You might not have what you've been praying about. But the word of the Lord is, he shall provide on your knees. He shall provide what you've been waiting on. He shall, I shall provide what you've been stressing over. Ain't no need to worry what tomorrow's gonna bring. He gonna provide. Ain't no need to cry about it. He gonna provide. Ain't no need to stress over it. He gonna provide. Yes. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Throw up your hand and say, Lord, provide. Lord, provide. Lord. I need to holler, provide, provide, do it, Lord.
like you said you would. Do it, Lord, like you promised me. Do it, Lord. I just believe that you can do it. I just believe you can make a way. I've got some problems, some great and some small. You being God will deliver me from them all. Still can't believe all the ways you've made. An incredible God deserves an incredible praise. Go down memory lane. Then he do it. If he did it before, he'll do it. Do it. Do it again. Yes. Yeah. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yeah. again. Say praise God. Say thank you Jesus. But we've heard a word today. And when you hear a word from God, it demands a response. It demands a personal response. I'm not talking, I'm talking to you. Your response to the word of God. Somebody said thank you for the word. But I don't know about you, but this touched my spirit today. It reminded me that there's a process that we have to go through. It reminded me of what Juanita Bottom sings about, I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on the Lord. Somebody here today is in limbo because you're going through a process. And Jesus is calling. He's calling to you to say, come to me. He says, give the preacher your hand, but give me your heart. I can't get you saved, but I know a man. I know a man, the man what he was talking about, who can help us through this process. Without pain, there's no great ending. We all got to go through something. Nobody told me that the road would be easy. But Jesus said, if you just come on up and give it to me, he says, I will be with you always. Where you are is not where I want you to be right now. Come on up and be a part of my family. Come on up so I can be with you when you have to take the knife, the burning wood, and the fire. Now, I, I, I'm going to let you get burned a little bit, but I'm not going to let you get consumed by the fire. So come on up into God's kingdom. Somebody out there knows that you are not where you're supp supposed to be. Somebody out there knows that you have not given your heart to God. Somebody out there knows that this is not the place God wants you to be. You're, you're, you're wavering, you're wandering back and forth. He's not going to transgress your will. But he wants you to know, I love you. You're my child. I formed you in my image. You should no longer be out there in the weary land. Come on up to God's glory. Pat, we're here. Ministers, come on down. Come on down. We're here. If you don't want to walk by yourself, I know that's a lonely walk, and it seems like it's an eternity to come up here. We'll walk with you. But I know that there's somebody out there that's waiting to turn their life around. I know there's somebody out there that knows that they need to change their ways. I'm just going to ask you, if you will, if you're sitting by somebody that you came with, that you could, could maybe touch their hand. If you didn't, if you didn't, just hold your hand out like that. Because we know that prayer can change things. And it might be somebody that needed an extra special prayer this morning. Not just for yourself, because he tells us to pray you one for another. We have so much going on, so much sickness, so many heartaches and pains within our 
lives, within our families, so many family members going through things, and we are experiencing things, and the devil thinks that he has us, but I, ha, Brother Malik told us this morning, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all things. Precious Lord, we come before you this morning. We come before you and we ask that you just will touch us, God, from the crown of head to sole of feet. Lord, we brought things in, but we don't want to take them back. We lay our burdens on the altar. We have been reminded that there is a process that we must go through. But in the end, we're going to come out with pure gold. Lord, we ask that you just hear our prayer today. Not just for ourselves, but for our families, for our friends, and even for our enemies. Lord, we ask you to touch that person that we're sitting beside. We ask you to touch that person that's on our road. We ask you to touch the whole congregation because the glory of the Lord has filled this room. Healing is here, so we claim that. We claim comfort here. We claim for families to be rejoined, marriages to be restored, children that have gone wayward to come back to where God has brought them. We train them up, God. So we believe and we trust in you. That job that we have concerns about, he told us that it might look like green on the other side, but it might not be for us. Let some things go and let God do the rest. Have your way, Lord, in this place and in our lives. We give it all to you and we don't take it back. For your promise is that I will never leave you nor forsake you. He said, ask, seek, and knock. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. And that, God, we give you honor, praise, and glory. And it is so and so it is. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Now unto him, now unto him that is able. We thank God for that. Bless your holy name. As they go out, God be with them and let them know I'm with you always. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we sing.